you get the situation where we're getting new variants, some of them more serious, some of them seemingly more contagious as well. At the same time, we know that the antibodies for some of these vaccines start to drop after three months. So what's the scenario that we're dealing with here? Do people lose their immunity after a certain period of time? Well, for sure, people can get reinfected. So if you're infected once, it doesn't mean you're going to get protection. But you have to, we have to separate that from considerations about the vaccines because the vaccines are inducing much more powerful specific immune responses that interfere with the virus. So your real question, I suppose, comes down to will the vaccines protect against all the variants? Now, no one can say that for sure, but up to now, at least a few of the vaccines are able to protect really with high percentage against so far all the variants. There are some vaccines not doing so well against the uh, South African variant. You then want to, you probably would want to know about therapy. Will therapy be as effective? The biggest therapy we need has to do with anti-inflammatory agents that occur later after infection in some people, particularly the older, that cause hospitalization, <laughs> ventilation, and were, would be responsible for death. So those things are you, you, you are really where you need the proper therapy. Uh, at the beginning, the antiviral therapy has lagged behind, but there's no uh, doubt that... Um, can you hear me? I've lost it. Damn it. Gosh. No, I'm we sorry. do we have you on. you perfectly. I lost the picture, so I thought I lost you. Sorry, I'm glad I didn't swear. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to say <laughs> that the variants of the vaccine will not lead to inflammatory changes that will have no therapy for the variants it won't matter they produce the inflammation by the same mechanisms so what you're really worried about is loss of therapy for the later stages when people are really sick you don't want good therapy that's now be slowly becoming available to be lost because of variants that's not going to happen but the variants may infect better some of them do they're more infectious they replicate a bit more and th they may spread more and you may get a higher incidence of what looks to be especially bad news. While vaccines are occurring, you're getting more infections. But as the bulk of the population is vaccinated, one can safely predict that this will come down, the infection rates as well. Uh, but it is disease that you'll be protected against. And I don't care what the variant is, is we, if we had good anti-inflammatory therapy. So, you know, I'm not really yet worried. But you're right that the immune response doesn't last a long time. Some of us predicted that as soon as we knew this was a coronavirus. When you look to see how previous coronaviruses behave and the nature of the spike protein, which is the kind of structure that usually leads to antibodies that don't last that long. So you can say that these, the vaccines probably will last well for approximately seven months and then likely require a boost. That's what I believe. Mm. So I think if you Time yourself. Is that... well, go ahead, please. No, I was going to say, in terms of the timing, it's, it's interesting because obviously you have people that have been vaccinated and then some months later we're still seeing new waves of infection. Does that mm -hmm. boost come in the form of a booster to the existing vaccine that they had? Yes. Or would they be using a different type of vaccine? No, it could be either one. It'll, it, I, it will do, it'll do, likely be with the existing vaccine, which does need to be boosted very likely, I believe, after about seven months. So we can expect that even if there were no variants, because the antibodies may not last so, so long. However, if variants emerge that these vaccines are not doing well by, a particular type of the vaccine that you know well, the messenger RNA vaccines, are very, very easy to make. The breakthrough with the messenger RNA vaccines was the covering, the fatty substance that covers the messenger RNA to protect it. I really thought this was not going to be possible because messenger RNA molecules really degrade easily. Mm. But people worked on finding mechanisms that coat them and that allow fusion right. to our cell membranes, and the messenger RNA gets into our cells intact. Now, if you have a new variant that the current vaccines are not doing well against, it's easy to change the sequence of the messenger and make a new vaccine. And that will happen if needed.
Dr. Gallo, that is all great, but I think the problem with those vaccines is also the distribution, right? Especially to really remote areas in developing nations. So let me ask you actually a personal question because my family lives in Bolivia and they barely have no access to almost any vaccine, perhaps Chinese and Russians. If they were to get Chinese vaccines, and this question comes from my own mother, can they get a Chinese vaccine now and in a few months if they have access to a messenger vaccine in the likes of Pfizer and Moderna get a different sort of vaccine or is there any risk of toxicity? There should be no risk. You can mix the vaccines at least intellectually, theoretically, as far as one can think there should be no problem with that. And I would take what vaccine is necessary, whether it's Sputnik from Russia, whether it's one of the Sinovac vaccines or other kinds of vaccines coming from China, but you'd want to talk with someone first before the exact vaccine you took, just to know what's its results for efficacy. Obviously, the current vaccines that are coming out of the United States have been very effective. And if you can get that, that's kind of ideal. There's really essentially no toxicity mm. at all. I mean, but not everybody in the United States is getting vaccinated. I have two sons in their mid-late 50s, and they haven't got vaccinated yet. And they, where they live and is, not, is not the same as, for example, in Michigan, there's an excess, I was told today by a colleague, there's excess vaccines. They can't give it away fast enough. <laughs> in New York, they have plentiful vaccine right now. But right in our Washington, Baltimore area, there are areas with serious problems, in, particularly in Maryland, where we don't have enough vaccines and my, my right. sons are still waiting. So and yeah. to your point, given the lack of vaccines um, in certain places, even across the U.S., we've had that Johnson Johnson pause, right? And we're talking about six very rare cases of blood clots out of 6.8 million people vaccinated. Was mm -hmm. it worth pausing then? Yes, I think so. I would have I would have thought about pausing because it's unusual to see thrombi and there's reasons that that could happen. That is, you could say intelligently that after three weeks or two weeks, whenever I, I don't remember the exact detail, but I think it was in two to three weeks, just about the time antibodies come, that in some people, the antibodies may have cross-reacted with something like our platelets, cause the platelets to stick together, like we call, you know, like agglutination, let come together to make little balls that are blocking vessels at the same time. The amount of number of platelets that are free to circulate goes down. So at the same time that you're getting clots, you could even then get bleeding disorder. So you knew that you could figure this out pretty quickly, and I think they probably did. It was certainly worth the pause. It's already restarted again. So we 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 first of all can't cry over spilled milk. It was done. Mm. But I would have agreed with their decision, yes. Dr. Gallo, do you feel like parts of the world, particularly in the U.S., where we see around half the population now vaccinated, are getting ahead of themselves? There's a lot of complacency, it seems. People not wanting to wear masks anymore, not wanting to socially distance, uh, you know, theme parks and the like, uh, and gatherings starting to reopen and happen again. Yes, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's definitely the case. I think there's a lot of people who just can't wait to freely travel. It, it, I have the greatest temptation, too, but we have to be sensible. There's still in very infectious of viruses present. And remember, the vaccine doesn't necessarily protect against infection. In fact, it seems it usually does not. It prevents against serious infection and disease. So the vaccine can still circulate if a person gets contact, gets infected, who's been vaccinated and can spread it to others who are not vaccinated. Also, we some of the variants are more infectious. So more people may be getting infected because of that. And the third reason is what you just said. People feeling, oh, well, I'm vaccinated, it's safe now, and, it, you know, go about things easily. No, we're not at the end of this. So we right. have to try to, we, we never had to go through what, for example, some people who locked down went through, like they do in Korea, like they did in China. Mm. My God, you know, you, you think of what quarantine means. It's an ancient Latin word, and the Venetians applied it when they put people on an island for 40 days. I mean, what was their choice? Well, they were in contact with new ports. When you go into new ports, you bring back to the city of Venice epidemics, you could wipe out the whole city. So anybody that was in a boat was quarantined out in the boat first. Anybody sick was put on an island, 
and it was quarantine. I mean, in, definitely in Italy, not it 40. Yeah, 40 days. I mean, the Chinese did it, what, for two weeks to everybody? So, you know, you had people going to hotels and staying there for two weeks and be sure that they weren't uh, spreading virus and cities were locked down. We're not used to that. Um, mm. Asia has more experience with those kind of things and can demand it easier. Americans, uh, you know, are proud and strong with their freedom and so on. But this is a different kettle of fish and we need to be really careful. And we're not there yet. Right. Uh, I believe we could get there this year, uh, but it's a belief right now.